Hi, I'm Thomas Saxon, Southern Storyteller, and I'm bringing you another story from the Civil Rights Movement, Remembering Viola. The murder of Viola Luzizia was one of the most shocking moments of the Civil Rights Movement. Her life is one example of the many personal tragedies suffered for a movement that transformed America from a society in which blacks were routinely excluded from full citizenship into one that now recognizes the equal rights of all citizens. Politically and socially involved, Viola was one of the few white members of the Detroit National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. Growing up in the midst of poverty, racial segregation, discrimination, and hatred, yet Viola refused to hate and lived a life of love and respect in a world of fierce hates and conflicts. The Voting Rights March from Selma, Alabama to the state capital of Montgomery, March 1965, was one of the high points for civil rights in the United States. On that notorious Bloody Sunday, March 7, 1965, some 600 marches were assailed on the Edmund Pettus Bridge by state and local police with billy clubs and brutally beaten, gassed, kicked, dragged, and driven back into Selma. It was like the Edmund Pettus Bridge was having a blood bath. Dr. King called off the march and issued a call for sympathetic Americans to join him in Selma to renew the march. Viola answered the call. Her husband, Anthony, warned her of the danger, and so did her close friend and housekeeper, Sarah Evans, who told her, Viola, you could be killed. However, Viola felt compelled to go. Despite the danger, she drove down in her Oldsmobile, which took three days. A stranger, when she arrived, she soon became known as a cheerful and tireless worker, serving at the hospitality desk and transporting other volunteers from place to place in her Oldsmobile. She sang strands of the Civil Rights Anthem as she turned her car back towards Montgomery to pick up another carload of marches. Leroy Moton, a local black teenager, was riding with her to help drive. They were spotted by a carload of Klansmen who noticed Michigan license plates driven by a white woman. That car symbolized for them the two most despised aspects of the Civil Rights Movement, Outsiders and Race Mixing. When Viola and the teenager realized they were being followed by a carload of white men, Viola said, these white people are too much, and she pressed the accelerator. Soon both cars were racing down the highway at 100 miles per hour. About 20 miles outside of Selma, on a lonely stretch of road, the carload of Klansmen pulled up alongside her Oldsmobile. One sat in the back seat, his arm out the window, and a pistol in his hand. He fires twice, sending two 38 caliber bullets crashing through the window, killing her instantly. Later on, President Johnson called Mr. Luizio, informing him of Viola's death. Mr. Luizio said his wife died for a sacred battle, the rights of humanity, and that she lived her life believing that all people were equal in God's sight. After her death, the family was besieged with hate mail and phone 
threats. The clan circulated ugly lies about Viola's character. And these were repeated in FBI reports. Though proven false, the rumors fueled sentiment among some that Viola was out of her place in Selma, just out of her place. It took almost a quarter century to recognize Viola's efforts. In 1989, she became one of 40 civil rights martyrs whose lives were commemorated on the Civil Rights Memorial in Montgomery. In 1991, the women of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference erected a stone marker on Highway 80 at the spot where Viola was murdered. And it is inscribed One to our sister, Viola Luzizio, who gave her life for the rights to vote. March 25th, 1965. Viola Luzizio, an unsung hero of the Civil Rights Movement. Well,